Okay, so let's do a quick couple shot here. We'll move these guys out. And if somebody else joins us, we will just expand a bit. There we go. Is this still good for you? Yes. Okay, great. Great. So because we have a small team this evening, folks, what I'm going to do is actually, we're going to start by just saying our names. And, um, you know, you could say where you live in Montpelier. Um, I'm not going to spend a lot of time on introductions, but this will actually be a lovely group to be able to have um, a good, robust discussion with. So I'm going to start by introducing myself, <clears throat> then we'll go around the room. This is being filmed, um, and there are audio um, microphone devices here, so make sure that you speak up and project, because a lot of folks are going to be watching these um, and adding in their ideas on the Padlet, the digital um, um, input that we have been having going on since the beginning. So my name is Sarah Waring. Um, I'll just give you a little bit of background uh, on myself. I used to live in Montpelier. I don't right now, um, but have been working in food systems and agriculture work for quite a while in Vermont. Uh, really honored to be facilitating this discussion with all of you. Um, and my current job right now is with the USDA's Rural Development Agency. So we do housing, we do community facilities, wastewater, infrastructure, broadband, telecom, and then we also do rural business support. My sister agencies are agencies like Farm Service Agency and the Natural Resources Conservation Service. So between all of us, we do a lot of the rural economic development and ag development work in the state of Vermont along with a lot of other great partners like the state itself. Food systems. Okay, come on in if you want to join us. Um, let's start here. And we'll just go around the room and your name and your town. I am Mike Miller. I'm the director of planning for the city of Montpelier here. And I also uh, have a small farm. I live in East Hardwick. And so we've got four sheep, goats, Critters. They'll try to put up my June hand, so mm -hmm. at some point we'll get enough dry weather to put up that. <laughs> uh, Albert, I live on uh, 90 North Street in Montpelier, and uh, I've been in there either cleaning in the dirt or making food some kind of way for most of my adult life. Come on, Albert. Uh, Lindy Sheets, I live in Calais. I work in Montpelier for like 23 years and lived in Montpelier for about Thank you. Uh, Linda Smith, I just moved to Montpelier. I can't hear you here. Oh, Linda Smith, I just moved to Montpelier this fall. I'm a retired farmer. I've been farming for four years, working in local food systems, and I'm really excited about this. Mm -hmm. Thanks for coming. Thank you. I'm Matt Wilson. Uh, I live in Barry, but I work for the city of Montpelier. So mm -hmm. I'm Eileen Siegel. I live right behind the Capitol uh, in Montpelier. Uh, I'm a dietitian and also have been involved with the um, community uh, lunches. I'm Linda Leeman. I live up on the hill in North, in North Franklin Street in Montpelier. My name is Eric Esselstyn. I live in North Montpelier. I watch my wife tend the garden. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Happy to be here. Thanks, Sarah. My name is Johanna Nichols. I live on First Avenue in Montpelier. And until um, our until our churches were closed, I was a volunteer for the Mon no, uh, Monday Community Lunch. Selena Moore, um, North Montpelier, Eric is my husband, and love the garden, but um, also particularly concerned about the hunger all around and how to use the older experience that people know about dirt and how to do it with your hands and not great big motors, but get a lot of food in the ground, growing from the ground. And so my garden could be more <laughs> and so forth. Thank you. Um, my name is Cynthia Hartnett and I live um, on Upper Main Street. I lived here for oh, you yeah, Cynthia Hartnett from Upper Main Street in Montpelier. I've lived here for decades, 45 years, I think. And um, 
I'm very interested in food. I've worked a lot with community harvest of central Vermont and still do, and also for the food show. Um, and I'm very concerned about the situation farmers are in right now, and especially because we have a really rich source of local healthy food here that's been damaged a lot. By the yeah. And we're going to get into all of that. So let's we'll get through yeah. the folks. Uh, David Hartnett. I live where she lives. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I've worked on Meals on Wheels and trying to get meals and uh, uh, helping the kitchen at the senior center as a volunteer and try planting some food in, in the community garden that was washed out. But <clears throat> it wasn't for sustenance, so I'm still good. But it, it, it's all one and the same. Yep. Great. Thanks, David. I'm John Ryan. I currently live in Burlington, but I coached a number of the food businesses, the local food businesses that you guys know well, um, from an office in Montpelier for many years. I just felt called to see if there's something I could do now. Hi, uh, my name is Will Stevens. I'm from Addison County, from Shoreham. Uh, my wife and I ran a commercial organic vegetable farm for 40 years that our daughter has taken over uh, last year, and uh, I was in the this building for eight years, uh, a decade or so ago, and uh, on the Ag Committee. And I'm now employed uh, as an outreach representative for Bernie Sanders. Mm -hmm. I cover Ag, small business, other nutrition, and a few other issues. So, but I'm here as Will Stevens. <laughs> <laughs> so with that, now that we all know each other, let me give you a brief overview of what we're gonna do for about the next hour and 10 minutes, all right? So we're gonna start with about a 15 minute just open conversation that is about um, what is going on right now, and we're gonna keep focus sort of on Montpelier in this central region. What is going on right now around this topic? And I'm gonna read the description of the topic again in just a moment. Then we're gonna transition into the ideas for the future. What can be done in the shorter term for recovery or the longer term for resilience? What is our vision for the future, but also what might be able to happen just this year or next year, right? And then at the end, we're going to pause and we're going to try to prioritize what we've come up with because when we go back to the big room, we're going to share out one or two or three of our prioritized ideas, okay? Everything will be captured, so don't worry about it being missed, but we are going to sort of do a bit of a consensus or voting at the end to make sure that we carry ideas into that room with the rest of the community there that we feel, feel like are actionable and reasonable and that we can lay out to the rest of the community, all right? So let me just read our topic one more time. I think I actually gave it away to the people who were lost. So food system, there it is, thank you, sir. Food system and food security is the title, and the way this has been framed is area farmers and emergency food systems have been fundamentally challenged by this disaster. As we look ahead, what should be done to advance the food system, local agriculture, food shelves, and meal programs, ensuring that all have options for safe, healthy food and that no one goes hungry in our community. Okay. So I'm gonna let you absorb that. I'm gonna invite you to introduce yourself. We did a quick round of introductions. Hi, Nona Estrin. I'm from East Montpelier, not far away, <laughs> and uh, interested in these proceedings, to say the least. Great, welcome, Nona. Thank you. All right, with that, I'm gonna kick us off. And I, my job is to facilitate, keep us on time, and also make sure that we share the airspace. So I'm just gonna warn you in advance that if you talk too much, I'm gonna cut you off <laughs> and let somebody else talk a little bit, okay? And I'll do it to all of you, so I will not play favorites, I promise, all right? <laughs> all right, so here we go. Let's get started. What do we feel like is going on right now around this topic in our community? What's happening around food security? What's happening around the local food system for us in Montana? There is no security. Tell us what a little did bit you say, no? Can't hear. There is no security no. right now. There's no uh, storage. The, the, most of the farmers that I work with, uh, one in particular, Bear Roots, you know, yeah. it is the first time since they've been in business, they're actually buying stuff in to try to fill their shelves. Mm -hmm. Their first round of carrots and a number of other vegetables were just 
body to the ground. And they, these guys have been doing it for years, so they, you know, they have their systems down, they have their equipment, and they know what they're doing. And uh, talking to them and the number of farmers at the farmers' markets that I directly solicited comments from, they feel uncertain, insecure, vulnerable, and unsupported at this point. We need to find a permanent along with the kitchen to feed everybody else. Um, may I ask a question? Um, may I ask a question? Um, are, are we out of food already now in this coming You know, fall? We'll, see, we'll see how it, it plays out at the end of the you know, year. Right now, I know a, a, a couple of people that raise uh, animals that are dependent on hay and uh, feed. There is no food, basically. We're going to slaughter their animals or keeping the ones yeah. that have to eat grass for now. And so farmers feeling vulnerable and the food supply, right? Yeah, no. First time I ever remember there being a conflict between the flat riverlands where we grow food for animals and people and um, the talk about creating wetlands to protect us from flooding. Okay. So thinking where, long term. Where do you feel like that conflict is uh, happening right now? The, to the feast farm, potentially. Okay. Um, okay. Yeah, any place that's flat and near the river, mm. long-term thinking uh, will take you to look at it and think, hmm, is this a good place for um, yeah. wetlands? Or a river or farm, too. Right. Dog, what what you know, becomes of those farms of, in the river? Yeah. Yeah. And obviously, uh, those aren't real issues because those belong to people. They own those farms. Mm -hmm. But the there farm. is conflict in mm -hmm. thinking. And I feel confused. Uh, in my own mind about it, yeah. and I'm sure other people do as well. Yeah, that's great. What else? Um, yeah, Eric. <clears throat> Is it still fair to say that basically 94% of our food comes in a diesel truck? Uh, say that again. Yeah, I know that. Not that much. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe, yes. yeah. He's asking about the percentage of food that's imported into the state. So seventy-five percent of all of our yeah. produce. Yeah, that's, that's right. That's a high that's percentage. Yeah. Yeah. How much? But why don't you go ahead and give us your give us your you know it doesn't matter the percentage. Why don't you give us your idea or the the concern that you've got? Okay, so, we shop regularly at Shaw's or Hunger Mountain, I mean, uh, the co-op and. We pick up local food wherever we can. I mean, the kind of things we're going to eat. We're having to be vegans. And I'm not sure in the wintertime um, we wouldn't get pretty skinny if we just ate local food. Mm -hmm. And I just, the long range picture of being food independent or even semi independent is a huge. Huge step. I can't believe the amount of plastic stuff coming from Kansas or California that's part of our effort to eat. And I'm more than willing to help you know, grow local food where we can play a role. We, we're okay. consumers at the moment, basically. Yeah. Yeah. As you said, also, diesel fuel is what brings it. So the environment's being hurt by just the fact that we need to yes. get it here. Yeah, so the role and the size of imports into our food system as we look ahead is going to be really important. How much, when do we bring it in, how does it come to us? So that's good. We'll capture that as we think about long term. Other thoughts about what's going on right now? What's happening right now, Linda? Uh, I more had a question piggybacking on that. It's just, what are we talking about when we're talking about long term? Like Montpelier and the area farmers we're concentrating in, like this area or the state, and yeah. what percentage is being imported? I think we need metrics. Like we can measure okay. uh, progress over time. Yep. Mm -hmm. How much? I mean, Hardwick and other places. It's not only growing the food, mm -hmm. but we can process a lot of food mm -hmm. ourselves mm -hmm. and keep it through the winter or store it through the winter. So um, it's the whole food system. When COVID struck, 
when this flood started. And COVID too, it broke the, the supply chains. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we just yeah. have to be strong and we have to support each other and we can measure our progress over time, how much we are, are producing over Yep. So I'm going to encourage us to think about what is happening right now on the ground in our first, we've got about seven minutes left for this part. So throw out any ideas about what is happening. I want to think about the meals on wheels and the, the security issues. I want to think about health issues. So the CSAs. Yep. I belong to a CSA and the CSA comes into Mount Baker as well, says Callis and Worcester, but he works his tail off. Yep. And and I'm sure there's going to have to be more greenhouses than that. It's just into the ground. There's a lot of flow of people who are making, who are, were making food and bringing it into the public space mm -hmm. to share. And uh, that's the first time I've ever seen that happening in that degree in this area. So right. you're saying prepared meals happened yeah. in a new and different way? Yeah, there, there the are just flood. all right. sorts of things have been happening. That right. Were, and also, I don't think oh, we measure the garden produce that people eat from their own gardens. When we say 75%, I don't think we ever have uh, measured the degree to which that's supplemented by home gardens. Mm -hmm. All right, so there are a couple of people with their hands up. So let me get to them. I think we've got Matt first, and then Eileen, and then Linda. Yeah? Yeah, so <laughs> my concern really is just rebuilding the systems for local populations because the, the community service department always needs to be meals program which serves over 50 clients, older adult clients um, in Montpelier and Northern Berlin. And yeah, I just want to make sure that we can expand that to reach more vulnerable populations like young house or even younger people like myself who you know have difficulty making them up. So expanding that food to the vulnerable population awareness of right and obviously making it more resilient because obviously the peace farm is in a location right now where it's going to flood again so it doesn't move. Thank you. Um, I was just going to ask, and ask what's happening now, um, how long the early churches are trying to brainstorm about somebody at the kitchen is going to destroy when they find a central source and put all together and Utilize one kitchen to train the needs of the community. That's a great conversation. Yes. Something that's in the works and needs to continue to be explored. So they're collaborating right now to think about the future. That's awesome. Linda. I don't know if this is right now, but um, the Sustainable Jobs Fund, which Bill knows a lot about, has been working the last couple of years on regional resiliency. And I think we should tap into what they have already found out because we're part of that and any stability we have is going to come not from Montpelier but from the greater region. So I would like to tap into the work they've done which is significant in terms of trying to get local produce and see what their ideas Who they? Who they? Uh, it's, what's it called, Will? Vermont Sustainable Jobs Fund. Yeah. The Sustainable Jobs Fund. Yeah. They do farm to plate and then now they have yes. this new initiative that is uh, trying to uh, tap into the resiliency of the whole region, not just Vermont. Mm -hmm. yeah. Did, did the, the farm to plate come out with a study of 21, 22 that analyzed the percentage of everything we were producing in this state and mm -hmm. showed where to make up the differences and what we needed to... A bunch of, a bunch of things. Jobs, it was processing, 200, acres. You know, it was you saw a page a couple of years ago. Yeah, there. so there's a great resource. Exactly. So, all right, we're going to do a couple more and then we're going to pivot into the next part of our so, conversation. So, like, this is like my problem. I get stuck by CSA. I don't need it all. But, but then I look and I think, well, um, I get it on Thursday, but the food shelf, I would go to Marshmallows on Wednesday. Um, so, what do I do with it? But if I could gather with some of the people in Callis, we could build it that we could put it in a central place oh, but just one right. person it just goes into the compost so oh, you can see it down to the, to what, Nona? there's a place down on, right next to the big fish market that closed the corner store in montpelier what is it called oh, oh I it. It. uncommon market it has the put it in there you're talking about. stick it in there yeah when it's fresh but <laughs> so not everyone knows right. about all that oh, no, but i love, I love this we're going to hold on to this idea 
people when we go people. into what can we do in the short term? Because mm -hmm. this where does our surplus go, mm -hmm. I think is a great short term action item that we can start to think about. Like a I personal wanna, surplus. Personal mm -hmm. surplus, exactly. Right. If you've got more than you need, right? Yeah. I'm going to hold on to that one for a short term. But I want to just turn to the food security system for a moment and the, the most vulnerable. I'm thinking about community harvests yeah. of central Vermont. Are they, and have they done anything new and different during this time, or is it just more? Are they trying to do more? more? And yep. they, have, they were in existence 14 years ago. Right. I cannot imagine what it was like before they existed, because I every week I'm, I'm there when they're packing up to get ready to send things to sites and um, meal sites and uh, food pantries and such all over central Vermont, all the way out to Marshfield and mm -hmm. um, Northfield. And the food is just wonderful, local, fresh produce. Yep. And um, I mean, I just get and hungry going there. Right? So, they put uh, in a brand, they got funding, they got a new van, and they got yes. a giant walk. Yes, yes. yes. they're really expanding yes. and they're doing well. Good. And they're, okay. I think they're a great organization. Oh, yeah. So it's a surplus leaning mm -hmm. on local mm -hmm. farms mm -hmm. that then yeah. goes mm -hmm. into the Food security system, yes. the emergency. And they work system. in conjunction with um, Willing Hands, which is a yeah. really big organization in mm -hmm. the Upper Valley, yeah. and um, they get things from them weekly. It's just amazing to see the wonderful food that people are getting. They didn't get. There's a lot of organization in yeah. the last ten years. Exactly. Yeah. All right, let's do two more of what's going on right now, and then we're going to pivot. You all were so eager to talk about ideas of what we could do. The next part of the conversation will be really exciting. Promise. Okay, Linda. Um, I, there's other programs too, like the Farm to Family and the yep. food stamps that go through the farmers. Can you market. speak louder, Danny? Oh, Farm to Family and the food stamps that go through the farmers market. I forget what it's called. It's the way you get coupons. Yep. And there's certain co ops that give uh, people on uh, EBT get a discount. Mm -hmm. I forget what it's called. Um, they get, they can sign up for a program, and yep. I know Puppy has, I know Hunger Mountain has it. But those programs make them sustainable for the future. Mm -hmm. They're good programs. Yep. Mm -hmm. And it requires that signing up, right, and then the awareness of where you can go to yeah. buy your food, which is an education, yeah. right? It's an education. Yeah. All right, let's give two more ideas. Well, I have one of the, one of the factors, even before we got hit by the flood, is the affordability of fresh food. And I worked in joint housing for a couple of years. And people would love to have had more food. And of course they have apples and stuff. But um, a lot of it's a godsend for, for the different agencies that are involved, the communities and the, there is I wanted to say that the an alliance as it were between the farmers and all of these networks. Mm -hmm. They work together to, to help. Mm -hmm. um, they're Great. Not separate. That's right. Yep. Right. A lot of farmers are already connected to the food security yes. system because yeah. they do the gleaning or because or they maybe they have just donate surplus or they're donating. And exactly. they get some yep. kind of a, a small um, tax break for that, but it's really small. Yep. Mm -hmm. Any other last comments about the food producers themselves? that we want to make sure to get on the table as we think about and transition into thinking about ideas for the future. We heard we heard about you know the land and what's with the conflict over land. We heard a little bit about just lack of food and lack of food for animals. It's Any, mostly the security of feeling vulnerable and just, yeah. you know they're trying to plan for the unplanned. Yeah. Yeah. Do they have a theme? I heard that there's not a theme up for the uh, farmers. So there's something federally that's empty there, isn't there? For, they got farmers. one million out of the twenty million, right? So that's the BGAP program mm -hmm. for the state of Vermont. Mm -hmm. uh, farmers are in a different category and do not qualify for FEMA direct assistance as farms. Mm -hmm. If their house was, you know, there are other things that they may be able to apply for, but as a farm business. FEMA and SBA do not support them. Is that all of the country? Or just far, it's all over the country. Farm Service Agency is their recovery agency. So their programs are the ones that farmers can apply to. Is so that it's a, a good one? 
It's not. Yes, it is. All federal agencies are tricky. Yes, it is a good one. It is a good one. Yes, ma'am. So just an example of um, climate change. Um, so the uh, some of the producers that are at the farmer's market, um, this week he didn't have a particular kind of cucumber because it's so wet that his cucumbers rotted in, you know, in the ground. And so I think one of my concerns about what's happening right now is our farmers can't depend on the weather. Uh, and um, not, not that they've ever been, you know, could depend on the weather, but actually there have been times in our past when a farmer could kind of set his watch by when something was going to happen seasonably. Paul Stone down in Shoreham told me that. He raises a gazillion number of turkeys. I was just saying, not anymore. No, yeah, and, so, and so now I feel like uh, we're talking about how are we going to protect, uh, how are we going to live with the rivers? Yes. But how is our food supply going to live with climate change, which is here now? Um, That's a great one. That's a good one to sort of pivot on because I think that sets the stage for us to come up with a few ideas around what does long-term resilience or even short-term ideas for our soils, our moisture, precipitation that is unpredictable, right? Some of those changing factors in the business of farming. The temperature so, fluctuations. Temperature fluctuations. So you got apple it. croppings. I don't know how Champlain body is wiped out. You got it. Hard our RNS program. program that is happening now for young kids who um, they go to camp to learn about farming and everything and they're apprenticing and I forgot who the woman is who runs that program. Well if you think of it we'll we'll mark it down. It's a new okay. venture, isn't it? All right, we're gonna we're gonna pivot. The next forty minutes are about shorter term recovery ideas. So this is the kind of idea that Eileen brought up about consolidating church kitchens. That can be done in the next year, right? Find a place, centralize it, maybe do the meals together. Mm -hmm. And then longer term, like land or like soil and unpredictability of moisture and precipitation and temperature, longer term resilience. So as you think about these ideas, say out loud for the group, this is an idea that I think we could do in the short term, and here's what it might look like. Or this is an idea that I'd love to see for the future for the long term. All right? We're going to do this for about 40 minutes, and then these will be the ideas that we consolidate at the end, and we just pick a few of them to take back to the group. All right? And I'm going to lean on people who haven't talked yet, Mike, and other people who, you know, need to speak up. <laughs> One minute. It may already be underway or under consideration, but I think when Irene happened, there was a, I think it was the Community Foundation had a, a real effort to try to reach out to the, the producers who were affected by that. Um, and I am realizing that over time, there have been a number of organizations, I think the Farm Food Fund, that had, you know, the Center for that Economy, that it already has in place the ability to review and, and do outreach to affected farms and yep. producers. Just would think there'd be value in trying to utilize those existing those existing places and give them more more money. I mean, find ways to let them have more funds in the, to provide either no interest loans or, or grants as needed, rather than try to set something up um, at home. So. They could even teach younger farmers what they do, and they could expand that way. No. Maybe I'm not I'm, understanding. I'm referring to those farms that have been affected by the flooding, how they get back on their feet, mm -hmm. and how they get the money to okay. do that. Okay. And there are there are places, there's structures in place that that have been doing that for a while, and they probably need more resources now than they have. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Great. So raising money through philanthropy and into the no interest loan, emergency loan yeah, program for right. farmers that already exists, right? Yeah. And that could be short term. Yeah, yeah. just an immediate. Yeah, Albert. Readjusting the ag budget, and I don't get in trouble for this, but uh, sending some of that dairy uh, 
money in, in another direction for a fossil fuel uh, uh, industry that isn't really sustainable moving forward in, in the future. Right? So tell me, you're talking about the federal budget or the state budget? Okay, so what action could we take in this community to move, if that's a, an idea that you want to you know, throw on the table, how does this community take a step toward that goal? Get 500 people to show up. There you go. Yep. State house. Yeah. So like a, a grassroots campaign kind of thing. Mm -hmm. Yep. And what's the goal? What's the goal? To we'll redistribute some of the uh, budget out of dairy into yeah. grain, ah, vegetable yeah. farm, you yeah. know, all the other mm -hmm. areas that we have shortfall and we could be growing stuff that could go into storage and we might have a some food to get us through at least a season. Okay. Is that short or long term? I don't know. I think that one's a little bit, maybe mid. Maybe, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it might take a couple sessions. To <laughs> These guys will probably answer better than, than I can. Oh <laughs> yeah. Linda. Well, to follow up on the concept of the sustainable job fund, maybe Montpelier could have a representative that's in touch with them so that mm. we're following and incorporating the work that they do into our plans. And that, oh. could, that could be short term. Very good. Uh -huh. So a Montpelier representative or, you a know. Connect, some connection between. Liaison. The, yeah. yeah. Between the city and what they're working on and the sustainable right. job fund. So, so we could see how to uh, use their information and also just yes. get their help. So it gets built into our city plans yeah, yeah, some of those longer terms. Right, so that we become a cooperating uh, yeah. a partner with that. Good yeah. idea. There you go. Short term? Long -term? I don't see both. You okay. Can start that tomorrow. <laughs> I nominate <laughs> Old <Waver. laughs> That's a great one. All right. Mm -hmm. Other short term or long term? Yeah, one of the things that was going on with Eileen here, yeah. what Meals on Wheels, is they still got the meals on. Yeah. And I think they, were. they still got meals delivered okay. to Rochester and yeah. God knows other places that were closed at a given time. You know, water was surrounded so much that the state of breaking it up. To focus and concentrate on the people that are doing it. And a lot of them are volunteers. And it's sort of like instead of waiting for the state, or waiting for uh, somebody else to help us out, it's something that we can do individually uh, as an agent in the world. And, and uh, it's helpful to have folks in high or low places, but we have to step up. That's, I love it. So tell me exactly, would you be adding volunteers to the Meals on Wheels organization? Would you be well, just celebrating them in some way or getting them a day off? What, what's the action? Oh, well, what do I you think, think the celebration would be a good thing. But yeah. So I work in the kitchen. I love just kind of things yeah. like vegetables and so forth. It's a zen. I, stop, I don't have to worry about it when I've got a knife and I've got to watch them in band. But uh, there are lots of people that come in and they, you know, they get all this food out. It's just enormous. They get it in Barry, too. They have, yeah. Down in the gallery, Bob is a great cook. So you, you've got a whole bunch of systems of people. Some of them are paid, but many of them are not. And, and, so uh, and make that focus a, on that. Just make, to focus on some of them. Okay. And that brings, okay. Hopefully brings more people in. And say, there you go. You don't have to sit by the corner and, mm -hmm. and weep and sackcloth and ashes. You can do something. <laughs> <laughs> no sackcloth and ashes. <laughs> All right, good. We got that one. Linda. First, um, a question. And then nice and loud, comment. remember. A question and a comment. I'm confused because there's GoFundMe's, there's different sources, like uh, the Hunger Mountain Co op is getting the word out of the Brook Farm, which was flooded, and the farmers, there's various sources. I don't know if we can consolidate it or not, or if it's better to have various avenues. It's a question. My comment, hi, Kayla. My comment um, about when I moved here, I heard about the peace program. I was like, whoa, the city of Montpelier is growing vegetables and paying money, like supporting this to grow vegetables for 
seniors and other ones, we need to make that. We need to support that. We need to put more money. We need to find land for it. I think it's a great program, no. and we it's need a, to. It's also support. supported by UVM Extension. Yep. They're okay. also a big part mm -hmm. of it. Mm -hmm. it's, a, it's, so, it's a it's a great win program. win win. All so right. the so the more money going to the fees program and permanent land is yeah. that what I'm hearing? Yeah, you say? and it's okay. a good example for other communities to do yeah. this. So so, so really a, a city farm. Yeah. A, a city. yeah. Their, their current location was totally flooded. They lost Yeah. 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 You don't okay. want to, on another is this a, oh sorry? Is this a long? This is oh. longer term though. Yeah, yeah, this would take a couple of years. Yeah. yeah, okay. Absolutely. Yeah. Go ahead, David, and then I'm going to make sure quiet people sure. talk to yeah. you. Quiet. No, you're good. Mm -hmm. the, uh, I watched the, what, the Two River Farm. At oh, first, yeah. it, it was running and ran into difficulty, and then the city yes. took it. In the course of one to two years, the amount of work and effort and energy, it and it was like a pop up. Yep. Phenomenal. Yep. They, you know, and so it was really sort of sad yeah. when, yeah. Really when, was. when the river came. But yeah. it can happen again. We can rebuild because yes. we need. Yep. Yep. Good. All right. I'm gonna let it go ahead, Eric. I am not from Montpelier, but when oh, there's three or four acres. I don't know how many acres did the city spend a million bucks. And we're talking about tennis courts. I know that it was a golf course, and it may take a fair amount of renewal of the soil. God knows what kind of chemicals were poured onto a golf course. <laughs> but there is land within walking distance, or biking distance, or whatever, which is part of the city, owned by the city. And we're talking about where can we grow food? Um, can some? Lens be focused on that as an option, not because a lot of people want to play tennis or whatever they want to do, but because the world is the world mm -hmm. is going to need local mm -hmm. food. I'm going to I'm going to put that as a potential the exploration of that. Yeah, I'm I've, betting I've if this becomes cool. if this becomes a priority issue, part of the next step of the group that tackles this is to find five parcels to then present to the city. So I'm gonna put that down as one, but I'm betting that part of what they would do is say, let's look at soils, let's look at river corridor, let's look at housing, some of those okay. other things. And yeah. let's look at hungry people yeah. in a world that's changing so fast. Mm -hmm. And yeah. I refer so. to those women here who was talking about their seasons when the cucumbers don't grow. Yeah. And we're just getting used to that. Yeah. There's I have friends who live in Salina, Kansas. Three generations, the first time ever, they've asked for crop insurance. They've been hammered by drought in western Kansas. Thousands of acres, zip. I haven't checked my, a loaf of bread, but the world is changing. And if we can maybe not depend on Kansas, but the old golf course, Britain did it during World War II. There you go. So, yep. um, Matt, Matt's head is hand up, and then I'll go to you, Linda. Yep. So, first I have to say, I'm sure our peace corps manager would love hearing that. Just Matt, yeah. Nice and loud. Sorry. I was just saying, I'm sure our peace corps manager would love hearing that the expansion of the program because uh, they work really hard on that. Um, I tried to collate uh, my ideas in the like, short, medium, and long. Oh, great. <laughs> so, my job for me. <laughs> or uh, short term just kind of building and strengthening relationships between local producers and suppliers. So what I was kind of thinking is like, especially reaching out to small scale producers um, or indigenous producers. Um, and yeah, it's really kind of building those relationships out. The medium term solution is supporting, uh, supporting the work of like an uh, ongoing farmer. <laughs> Sorry. Um, but yeah, just kind of developing uh, those relationships and kind of uh, reaching out to uh, like pod communities and indigenous communities. And then really the long term solution is uh, building out food forests. And building out what? Food forests. Um, 
and other small scale, small scale uh, community uh, food operations. And it just came back to me. It was um, That's all right. I I was just like one step ahead of myself. <laughs> we'll come back to you, Matt. Yeah. There's come no back rush. Back. There's no rush. So I'm just going to take a quick moment. So food forest, right? right. Edible landscape I, I idea, yeah. right? Yeah. Okay, Linda, sorry. It seems like, I think you said it, I mean, yeah. supporting the farmers who are out there now, and how can we do it, like through the farmer's market, but it seems like the PR, the PR has been really good for the business mm -hmm. people, but it doesn't mm -hmm. seem so good for the farmers. Mm -hmm. And until we can really say, this is just as important, yeah. Yeah. and it is, and I mean, so there needs to be PR for the value and the importance and and working with not only like getting land, but how about the people who are out there already doing it? Mm -hmm. And how do we really support Immigration of uh, farmers, so like providing incentives so that people from other states can come here because there's a lack of young farmers in the state. Mm -hmm. that, and that could be the apprentice up. program. Yeah, right. Mm -hmm. yeah. Okay, I saw Albert stand up. Uh, I guess if I was king of the forest, I think the farms are the center of the community that I would build a central farm house for all the farmers with storage where they could sell their stuff every day. There would be a one kitchen there where they could feed the whole community. All the food comes in, it's processed there, it's distributed, and it's central to Montpelier. Yep, it's a permanent good. house. Yep. So there's, a, there's a, 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 a model out of Philadelphia called the Common Market. They represent 185 family farms. Because with climate change, if we don't prepare and have some kind of storage and yes. facilities like that yeah. in place, yeah. 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 centralized and shared. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Along, yeah. Along with the integrating farmers and the users, what about a regular group of five people who attach themselves to, say, the sheep farm a mile outside of Montpelier, and once a week they go and they're available to do whatever. Uh, jobs they're given. Mm -hmm. uh, there's a group like that at the North Branch Nature Center. Yeah. They build furniture, they mm -hmm. swab out the basement, they do all kinds of fun and unfun jobs. But whatever they do that day that they go, they do um, something that has been lined up for them. And so all week long, people can say, labor. oh, we can get our group to do that. So um, volunteer Volunteers, but regular force. people, like okay. a, a small select labor force for this place, okay. for this place, for this place. There's got to be a way to, to do that uh, that would work. And maybe it could be in exchange for food. I don't know. Mm -hmm. That's right. I'm going to yeah. invite, do you want to actually come into the circle and join us? Sure. You are more than welcome. Here's a chair. Thank We'd love to welcome you. <laughs> I wasn't sure if you were butterflying or if you yeah, wanted no, to Yeah, no, I kind of was, and then I was like, wow, this is very interesting. All right. I actually want to be here. Do you want to just share your name? Oh, I'm Kayla. I'm I work with Linda at the North Branch Cafe. Oh, oh great. <laughs> Thanks for coming today. Yeah. <laughs> so we're in the middle, Kayla, of short and long-term ideas for the future, or mid-term, mid if you want to throw those out. Did I see a hand? I thought I saw one on the corner of my eye. Yeah, David. Um, when the tomato blight hit Central Vermont, a lot of farmers said, this is it, we can't grow tomatoes outside. Mm -hmm. We have to raise our tomatoes in greenhouses, and they it's produce tremendous they results. Do. So I'm thinking hydroponics. Uh -huh. I'm thinking while well, land is good, we don't always have to grow everything on land. There are urban. Greenhouses, for lack of a better way of saying it, they grow micro uh, yep. plants and so forth. So yep. it's just it's sort of let's stretch our imagination a little bit and think of how ways that if you're a farmer, not only knows how you stay in the business, yep. but is there some way that you can balance yep. your existing practice and then add to it? And then the big communities like Burlington have these high buildings. Yep. Maybe we could even develop things on the top of buildings. <laughs> I've yeah. seen that before. Okay. Yeah. So I'm going to put this into urban um, hydroponic or alternate, uh, what do I say? Uh, vertical farming. 
vertical, but it's not all vertical. So I'm going to say non-soil non based, right? Yeah, like basically. other, yeah. not on the ground, but yeah. on buildings, in in straight up walls, or Just more, yeah. more yeah. hydroponics. Yeah. Okay. Alternative soil based. Yeah. Yeah. Alternative they're, soil based. Yeah. Yeah, they're good soil yeah. based yeah. tomato. Uh, little, little guys make great soil based tomatoes. So there's spring Kate field. Farm. Yeah. Yeah. And Kate Farm yeah. also. I'm about to visit a 10 acre greenhouse tomorrow in Berlin, New Hampshire. Wow, Ten glass or plastic? Acre. Glass or plastic? Glass. All right. Yeah. Oh, right. Oh, right. <laughs> I'm just conscious of how. Wow, that's great. There haven't been a lot of suggestions for dealing with food insecurity for the most, for those who need it most. Yeah. That they are uh, often dependent on food excess mm -hmm. uh, and upon the ability of producers to have lots of cucumbers and, and the like. And, and I'm just surplus to give. And I'm just I'm just conscious that the number of people in that need grows with with experiences like this, mm -hmm. and um, often comes at a time when the supply and the capacity is is limited. So I'm yeah. just wondering mm -hmm. if folks yeah. have thoughts about that before we. Mm -hmm. um, and right now, all of the churches that were supplying the community lunches all during the week were all closed because we, we were all flooded. Yep. So there's only one site yep. in front of the Episcopal Church that Skinny Pancake is supplying yes. us a, a, a to go. Mm -hmm. um, but we all, were doing a right. real meal, I mean, a real sit down, real dinner. Uh, on every Monday at our church, and other churches were too. So, yeah, what's happening with that? So, what's a what's a right what's now. a vision? What's an idea for that? We heard. Well, I think there, there's actually a meeting to be happening this week um, around the Trinity Church, which whose uh, church kitchen was not affected. Whether they could open their doors and then every church could still do their Monday or Tuesday or Wednesday meal in that site. Oh, great. So that's something that the, um, the question is, you know, um, are they going to be able to prepare a meal or are they going to have to purchase a hot meal and then supplement it, which is what's happening right now, mm -hmm. and that, how, how that cost is going to be addressed. So. Imminently. Imminent. Good. So that's short term. What's a long term vision for that? What's a what's a I mean, does it make sense long term to have each church do their own? That's the question. No, it doesn't. Yeah. You have there, so there's five churches right now, yeah. maybe eighty plus volunteers trying to service the same group of people that you could go with four people in a kitchen, mm. literally. Okay. I've, done, I've done the UU meals for years in the morning kitchen, you know, mm -hmm. had these conversations mm -hmm. for years now, but all of a sudden, post-COVID and flood, it's, it's a thing. Yeah. So should we put, I don't want to say consolidate, yeah. but should we put organize or coordinate the charity meals in Montpelier? I would, like the future? To, I would like to introduce the idea of, of promoting the idea of doing it some of the time. This is exactly what we got when we got Saga and all of the little, I was the director of Senior Meals and Meals and Wheels for the whole state for 20 years. And we had lots of lovely little kitchens that all went with Saga at some point for exactly these reasons. And all of the local donations stopped coming in five months out of the year that people were bringing them. And um, we lost something, we gained something, we lost something. So maybe it's a great option. It may be absolutely necessary in some places at some times, but we should. Be, and, it may, and it may not be something not that the community good. picks up if the churches yeah. are going to be working on it themselves. Yeah. Right? Mm -hmm. So it doesn't have to be a future idea. Yeah. Mike's just, got his hand too, so we'll go back to you. I in just the need to say that we don't just cook the meal, we sit down with people and we eat as a community. Yeah. So four volunteers for eight, you know, and that would just, yeah. you know, it's, it's the very, very important to socialize, to be part of a community, mm -hmm. you know, to share meals with people. Yeah, I agree, but there's a social, wider social that's not getting food. Yeah. I can't get to the places. Yeah. Yeah. 
All right, Mike, let's hear your idea. And then, unfortunately, folks, believe it or not, we're going to have to start prioritizing relatively soon. So, um, so I haven't been saying anything because my boss didn't want me to be kind of jumping in, but there are two things that I think could be helpful. One is the previous um, MSAC director, uh, the senior center director, one of her goals was uh, with the Country Club Road site was that as we build out that site for, it's meant to be a recreation and community center, and a part of that community center is was intended to be, designed to be, a large commercial kitchen because the commercial kitchens are too small in order to do the meals on wheels. So they want to grow and expand that. That could be an opportunity where others could you know, there could be a, a larger coming together of the churches to also go through and say, can we consolidate a lot of our work into, in other words, one large freezer? Uh, and again, Country Club Road is out of the floodplain, so it can't be flooded again. Uh, it would be a, a location where we could store food, um, you know, and it's something the city would own and operate, and therefore take some of those costs off of the Volunteers still need to be probably staffed by a volunteer, but at least the city can take some of those some of those costs. And I don't know what's happening with that idea, and I don't know if you know much about that. But I know when uh, Sarah left, I don't know what happened to that that idea. But that was always an idea she had. Yeah, um, I don't believe there's really any updates on that, just because the whole country of road process is still ongoing. Um, okay. I will say the farm has potentially a new site, a country of road. Good. So we've got that one. Uh, the second, the second um, large project, that a long-term project, would be that actually, Home Farm Way is not owned by the city. It is still, a, it is still a defunct property, not owned by anybody. It is still technically owned by the Two Rivers Farm Company, General which, Holding. which is gone, yes. and so yeah. it's it's still there in limbo. And the feast farm just jumped in and took advantage of a space that wasn't actually occupied. So it would be another opportunity. The, the city has always been betwixt and between. Do we take this property or do we not take this property? Mm -hmm. And so it is an opportunity where um, there could be long-term farming there. It is a farm, um, mm -hmm. but these things will happen periodically and that it is in the floodplain. I don't know how often. It will flood, but periodically it will. But in between, you might have 30 years without any flooding, and this is uh, 15 acres of arable farmable land. But we really need to resolve the ownership of it. Ownership, yeah, OK. Kaylee, do you have any ideas? Is it Kaylee or? Oh, Kayla. Kayla, I'm yeah. sorry. Do you have any ideas you want to throw oh, out before oh, we start to? Yeah, I was just kind of thinking about um, the free meals and another way how they do free meals every Friday and Wednesday, I believe. And I feel like they might have been a bit of a forgotten part of the community in a way. I've been volunteering there for a little bit. And they're really needing help and um, more people to show up. Mm -hmm. um, for they have free massage, free acupuncture, they have, yeah, more community gatherings, but there's not many people are coming up, I guess also because most of the people who go there are honestly, yeah, forgotten community members who need mm -hmm. special attention. Um, so, yeah, I mean, they have a garden. They were out of the flood zone. Where is it? Um, on Berry Street. Okay. Yeah, another way, community center. Oh, another way. Mm -hmm. Yeah. yeah. Um, so yeah, maybe there could be collaboration mm -hmm. with them love it. as mm -hmm. well. I love yeah. It. yeah. Thank you. <laughs> OK, bear with me. I'm going to read through all these ideas. And then we're going to have to sort of do a bit of a voting. The ideas will not get lost, OK? We're going to save them all. They will all go in the notes. They'll all go in the reporting. But for tonight's purposes, we're going to pick what we think are the most doable um, or the most actionable, maybe a couple short-term and one long-term, maybe only one short-term and a few more bigger long-term ones. Remembering that this group who's here tonight and the folks who are going to join us upstairs are the people who are going to vote with their feet, right? We are going to be the volunteers or the city officials or the organizations that stand up and do this together. So remember that you're voting for something that you may actually be 
standing up and raising your hand to do later on, okay? Short term, we have um, moving more money to financing organizations, 0% interest or philanthropy to farmers in need. We have a Montpelier representative to the Front Porch Forum, uh, Front, sorry, F2F, uh -huh, Farm to Plate, <laughs> so that our local city plans incorporate long-term food resilience goals. We have supporting and celebrating the volunteers who run Meals on Wheels and Food Security. We have the FEAST program, more money and permanent examining permanent spaces for that FEAST um, city farm idea. We have strengthening relationships between producers and suppliers, particularly reaching out to underserved populations, BIPOC and indigenous farmers and food producers. We have um, incentives for other farmers to come to Vermont. We have small select regular volunteer labor force to do work on farms. We have just public relations, just getting the word out about farmers and their need right now just raising the awareness across the state about what has happened to our local food system because of this. We have centralized or coordinated church food distribution, and that's a question mark because that may really be moving forward on its own. And then we have making sure to include all pieces of the food security, emergency meals, including the Another Way Community Center. Okay, long term. Do you want to do you want to vote on those real quick, and then we'll go to long term? Because this is a lot otherwise. I have a thought, yes. yeah. Sarah, that yep. if I'm trying my best to capture the ideas that you have here on the sticky pen, that perhaps people could just do a kind of oh, check. Bless there. your heart. We have been told we absolutely can't put anything on the walls. So the stickies, the stickies might be good. <laughs> sure. But I sure. capture all of them. Do you want me to? Yeah. I'll lend so you I'll, that one. Which you, it might take a uh, minutes to put it together, no but problem. it will allow people. I'll give people. It could be really long to try to do uh -huh. the ideas. Uh -huh. I like that. Thanks, John. Okay, so here are some of the longer term ones. Readjusting our state agriculture budget so that it prioritizes diversified vegetable farms and move some of the money out of dairy. Um, the permanent land option, I guess I had it in both categories. I probably wrote it down in short. I didn't mistake. hear what you just said. Feast farm, the permanent land option. Mm -hmm. um, food forests and small scale community operations. So incentivize, we don't have a specific action item, but that's long term. How do we think about food forests, forageable, edible landscapes? Um, shared farm storage processing distribution in a centralized facility somewhere. Uh, alternative soil-based growing, so hydroponics, urban agriculture, vertical agriculture, how do we incentivize these in the state to make sure we have resilience long-term? And then the, the um, land ownership issue of the home farm way site and the potential community center uh, that is already in the planning process and how that could actually be utilized for a uh, large commercial kitchen and food storage. We could essentially jump into that process again, right, with this idea. So. Um, I have a way of short term versus long term. Okay. It sounds like nice you're getting confused. Short term seems to be more like clinical dots. <sighs> like, and then long term is looking for a more centralized, organized structure, like um, mm -hmm. how the key is but it's more right now we can connect the dots. And That's a great way to put it. That's a great way to put it. So why don't you, if you have one that you feel like passionate that you'd like to call out as John is doing this exercise, is there any short-term idea that you would love to see us take back to the big group? Anyone want to just call in? Hey, but I want to go with the beast gardens because that's the center of distribution. You don't have the garden. Now, is that a short term or is that long term? Are you talking about exploring a permanent talking, site for it? I'm talking about well, long term. Right? It, it would have to be long term because right now there's not much there. Okay. But so I'm gonna, gonna, how are we going to feed? So I'm going to say one vote for this idea of exploring permanent options.
options for the feast farm, right, and the feast program, and exploring more funding for it so that it can become really this community farm that we can turn to yeah. and that has a more robust yeah. program. There's only one vote. Can we add to that? I mean, can we? Oh, yeah. yeah. Okay, okay, we're going to vote. Oh, everybody, right? Yeah yeah. yeah, yeah. I'm just asking for anyone that anyone feels passionate about getting on the PR. Yeah. The PR. Yeah. All right. Which one? PR. 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 Getting yeah. the word out. PR, yeah. The values of what's going on and how important it is. Okay, great. I'd also second supporting the feast program and all the little bias towards that um, and the emergency food hub. Yeah. I didn't hear that again. The emergency food hub. Okay. Yeah. So is that the food storage and distribution idea? The big central kitchen? Okay. Yes. I had not heard it called the emergency food hub till right now. So, oh, I, so that was I, I was really that one more. Okay. So <laughs> he just put a name on something that's been said a couple times. I'm just gonna clarify the idea of a centralized kitchen with food storage that farmers could use in the area, having that be... Well, I thought of it like a seed saver sort of thing, right? Seed like, saver, food saver, processing kitchen, right? right? So in case of emergency, if there's a stock. Okay, I'm gonna call that long term, yes? And that would be a, a building in very building. near the, in the, in the city. Well, you could have maybe a decentralized one in the short term. But I think if there's a small group of people who tackles that idea, then you can come up with what do we do now, what do we do 10 years from now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. 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 Okay, so those are great ones. Are there any short-term ones we want to make sure? How would we do the PR? Do you want to give us like an idea of what a group of volunteers in Montpelier could do for that? Um, well, you could use front porch forum, you could go to the farmer's market um, with signs. I mean, it, it's sort of like there could be um, different uh, radio stations used in different ways for talking about it. I mean, it's just, it's just getting, you know, it's just getting, you know, things in the editor, you know, all, all different, all, all the PR ways of just, of the message is, you know what's really going on here, and the farmers here need support, no. and, and this is some of the things you can do, and da da da. So it's really about getting the general public to, to be volunteer, to donate, to and, and, and just be know that, so, so the farmers know that they're appreciated too. There you go. That's yep. really okay. Important. How you doing, John? Okay. 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 The, just a silly thing. A funny as a singer once um, the whole idea of performance and arts and stuff. And there were all kinds of jingles on the radio uh -huh. in my era. Um, and if someone could think of a jingle that we could keep singing over and over and over. <laughs> but, I love it. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I mean, not, it'd have to have. Support jingle. Well, yeah. Was it Katie Cuff? Was talking about how a mantra. Singing a song a mantra. Mantra. and saying it over and over again. Have a, have a contest for a farmer somewhere. Right, right. Contest. I love it. Contest for a farmer. And then that, hopefully one thing would come become the. We do know, have a lot of great performers in Vermont, so <laughs> there you go. Our, our okay, singers. I'm gonna I'm gonna start. We are gonna try to do this thing and give you. It's gonna be tight. There are some pens here at this table. But the political is also important. We're gonna we're gonna put these short-term ideas, which includes it includes one of the, the political one. So John's putting these out. So we're gonna pass out pens here, or if you've got one, please use it. And please only do two votes at this point, okay? And then we'll grab the, the couple that have the most votes. One for short term. No, you don't have to do that. I think at this point, no, let's sure. just do whatever this whatever you want. Yeah, this yeah. should be just yeah. short term. Vote for two. Yeah, vote I'm, for I'm two. moving them we've around here from the short to medium, here. so it'll be a little clearer, and I may have missed some, so. And do we mark our vote on the paper? Yes. Yeah, that was my thought. We just put one of those little checks. Each person one vote. On, one vote on each category. 
just put a check mark next to the two that you think two. we should take two. upstairs. Two. One and, two. I, and I will you sort them with a short long of way. You can put two checks on one. one. You, you have two one. 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 votes. One. Yes, you may put two <laughs> checks on one. Do they need to be on the long term and the short term? Don't worry about it. I will sort them out later. Okay. And if we get a bunch on long term, then great. So if he starts with short term on this side and it moves towards longer term over here, and I probably missed a few, so I'm going to move some pens. So if uh, anybody sees one that they didn't get, okay. didn't get captured, I'll, I'll quickly Quick. put it in, and people might want to hold a vote until they make sure they've got them all. All right. So here's what we're going to do. Why don't we start, Eileen, with you? Right. You come up, and we'll go sort of around and through. Can we establish? Counterclockwise, or yes, exactly. Okay. So start behind Eileen, and then shuffle this way. <laughs> and vote, vote as you go. But we do have to do it relatively quickly. Paul gave me the ten-minute sign about six minutes ago. So it was good. We were definitely wrestling with how do we do dot voting in the state house where you can't put anything on the wall. It was a tricky. Well, here we go. Here we go. Here we go, folks. No, I heard you say I'm going to read the ones that got the most votes out loud if you want to hang out for just a moment. So there are open lunches now. Yeah, open dinners. And they usually have it kind of like the same thing, like food the Where's the ones that just food The emergency food hub. Yeah, I agree. Yeah, for sure. I think they are. All right. All right, folks, here we go. I'm going to read the ones that we have out loud that have the most votes right now and again I'm saving all of these okay so we have three votes for um, a local grassroots campaign to readjust the ag budget away from dairy we have short-term more money for the feast farm and long-term a permanent location and then we have a Montpelier representative to the farm to plate plan so that we can incorporate food resilience into our local planning. All right? The others will still live, okay? So if they end up coming back around in community conversations, they're still going to be live. But these are the ones I'll bring up upstairs. Thank you, Sarah. All right. Yeah. Here we go. Yep, head back up. Thank you. Thank you, Sarah. Absolutely. 